history video. I know I'm just excited as you guys are because we are finally at the end of this unit. This is the last video for unit three, and we're going to focus on a lot of stuff that we would be able to do in the lab setting. So we're going to talk about spectroscopy, the photoelectric effect, and we're also going to talk about Beer's Law. <laughs> no, not that kind of Beer's Law. I'm not sure if that's school appropriate or not. I better edit this out of the video. I'm sure I'll remember to do it. Anyways, by the end of this video, you should be able to understand the purpose of different types of spectroscopy and how they are used. You should also be able to evaluate the photoelectric effect and compute energy and frequency, as well as calculate molar absorbance using the Beer-Lambert law. So, we talk about spectroscopy, and spectroscopy is very interesting because it is the study of the interaction of electromagnetic energy and matter. Different forms of this energy impact matter differently, and then we can use a sensor to determine if radiation is absorbed, if radiation is reflected, and this would be consistent across the same molecule using the same type of spectroscopy. So if we know the absorbance and reflection pattern of a particular molecule, we can test an unknown and then compare that unknown to the known to see if it matches. So it's a way for us to actually go through and determine structures of unknown compounds. Certain wavelengths also correlate to certain functional groups in molecules and the way certain things bond in molecules. So even if we have no idea what the substance is, spectroscopy allows us to have a little bit of an insight as to how the molecules are bonded and how they're put together. Now we don't have a whole lot of spectroscopy instruments here at East Central, but there are quite a few that you will experience in college. One that particularly comes to mind uh, would be something like an HPLC high performance liquid chromatography or even something like a proton NMR machine. Proton NMR machines are really neat because they use um, really really strong magnets to determine the structure of a compound. It's really neat because you have to take off like all your jewelry and stuff, you can't have your cell phone in there, it's a really really strong magnet. So what are the three types of spectroscopy that you need to be able to know? Well, there really are four. One we already talked about, which is photoelectron spectroscopy way back in the first unit, and that's how you can determine the uh, atomic structure. Remember that the peaks corresponded to the electron configuration based on the heights of the peaks and where they were located. You could say 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You could identify the element based on the peaks. The three others we want you to know are microwave, which are transitions in the molecular rotational levels, and those help us determine where hydrogen atoms are located or how many hydrogen atoms are in a compound. Infrared, which refers to the transitions in vibrational energy, which lets us know what types of bonds are present. And UV vis, which involves transitions in electron energy levels, and that allows us to determine the identification of a molecule or the concentration. UV vis is one we're probably most familiar with because we talk a lot about it when we talk about photoelectric effect where when you, a certain wavelength of energy hits a particular electron in a specific element, it could cause that electron to jump up an energy level. And then when that electron goes back down an energy level, it actually releases light. Now that jump up and down depends on the element, it depends on the wavelength of light, and the color of light also depends on the amount of energy that is released from that electron as well. So speaking of photoelectric effect, when certain wavelengths of light hit an element, it can cause an electron to be released. Now, you can decrease the uh, wavelength, you can increase the wavelength, you may not necessarily get an ejection of an electron, but it only happens with specific wavelengths of light. This is known as the photoelectric effect and told us a lot of things about electrons. It told us that energy is quantized, meaning that light exists as a particle as well as a wave. You've probably heard of wave-particle duality, and you should also be familiar with the de Broglie wave experiment, which provided uh, information on how light exists as a wave. Now the wavelengths that cause transitions differ based on the element. So if you've ever seen an atomic spectra before, you know that different wavelengths of light are produced based on the energy of the photon that is released. When we take a look at this, we need to be able to understand the relationships between wavelength, energy, and frequency. The equation C equals lambda V describes the relationship between wavelength, lambda, which is in meters, be careful because you probably will get this in nanometers, and frequency, which is in hertz. C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The energy of that photon is related to the frequency as well. That is E equals HV, where H is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and V is frequency. So you can actually combine these formulas to get the energy from the wavelength, E equals HC over lambda.
Let's look at a practice problem. What is the energy produced from a wavelength of light that is 490 nanometers? Well, we can use our formula here. That we just learned E equals HC over lambda. We know H, we know C. Lambda, we just need to convert to meters, and we'll be in good shape. So we plug in E equals H, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times the speed of light. over lambda. Now remember, we need to convert that to meters. A real easy way to do that is simply add times 10 to the negative ninth to whatever number you get for nanometers. So we just plug in 490 times 10 to the negative ninth. We should be able to solve for E. So we plug those numbers into our calculator. Using correct significant figures, we're going to get 4.1 1 times 10 to the negative 19th. Now the energy for that, joules. I'm sorry, the unit for that would be in joules. One thing to keep in mind is that when you are solving for energy, because remember the multiple choice section of the AP exam does not allow you to use a calculator. You want to look for that number okay, in a lot of the answer choices. So it makes it really, really easy to solve if it's asking for energy and you see some things about wavelength and uh, frequency and whatnot. If you're looking for energy, we're going to be looking for something that's times 10 to the negative 19th almost always. All right, simple problem. Let's move on. The last methodology we're going to look at involves the Beer-Lambert law. Now, keep in mind that shining a light through a solution causes the beam of light to become less intense over time. This is directly correlated to the concentration. If the concentration of the solution is high, then more of the light is going to be deflected and less will be able to be seen. In this case, we use a spec 20 to be able to figure this out. We'll actually use these in class. So as the concentration increases, the beam of light is absorbed more. And this is given with the equation E A equals E B C, where A is the absorbance, E is the molar absorptivity, B is the distance, and C is the concentration. So I just want to make sure you understand that you can establish a relationship between these things. Now, Notice that it is a linear relationship. That's really, really important to understand. You will take a lot of this into consideration when we do a lab utilizing Beer's Law a little bit later on in the next couple weeks. All right? All right, guys, pretty straightforward stuff for today. Um, make sure you can understand different types of spectroscopy and how they're used. Evaluate the photoelectric effect and compute energy and frequency. And also calculate the molar absorbance using the Beer-Lambert Law. Now, we'll cover more about the Beer-Lambert Law in just a little bit. Take care, guys. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.